Hey guys, welcome to another overclocking tutorial today with the Asus Z170 Pro Gaming motherboard. And today we will do a non-K overclocking. This means we will take this Core i3 6100 non-K CPU, which has a stock clock of 3.7 GHz and clock it to 4.25 GHz, which equals an overclock of 15%. To do this, we have to flash the BIOS first. You can get the BIOS on my website overclocking.guide. I will also put the link in the description so you can easily find the BIOS. So first of all, enter the BIOS, use the downloaded uh, BIOS, put it on a USB drive, go to ASUS ESET Flash 3 utility, check where you have located the BIOS file and then just proceed to flash the BIOS. Okay, after you flashed the BIOS, you have to go back to the BIOS by pressing the delete key. And yeah, in this tutorial, I'm using the i3 uh, 6100 CPU, which has a stock clock of 3.7 gigahertz. Of course, this tutorial also works with all other non-K CPUs. The procedure is always the same. For example, if you use an i5 6500, 6400, the whole thing is the same. So you can just copy my settings for your system. Now, first of all, press F7. So we go to the advanced menu, go right to advanced CPU configuration, scroll down, CPU power management configuration and disable those two options. You have to disable both of them, otherwise you will not be able to boot or enter Windows. That's because of the non-K overclocking. You have to dis disable all the power saving options. Go back to the AI tweaker and yeah, in this tutorial we will overclock by 15%. To do that, first of all, we change the AI overclock tuner to XMP. This will load the correct memory profile. In case you don't have an XMP memory, maybe if you only have 2133 um, memory clock, just use manual instead of XMP. Select, select no. And you can see I have uh, sticks which are rated at 3300 MHz. Uh, yeah, and change the BCLK to 115. This will be the 15% overclock. You can already see up here, it now changed from 3700 megahertz to 4255 megahertz. Change the CPU core ratio to sync all cores and change this value to 37. Basically, you just have to use the value you can see here on the right, which is the, uh, the maximum stock multiplier of your CPU. In case you're not sure about which value to pick, um, there's a link in the description where you can take a look on my website. And I put a table in there with all the descriptions of the CPUs and the multipliers you have to use in the BCLK. Of course, you can also use a higher BCLK here. It's just dependent on the CPU. If you have a CPU with a very low multiplier, for example, the i5 6400, you can already start with around 140, 150 here. Scroll down. And now you can see, because of the high B clock, BCLK, uh, the DRAM frequency was changed to 3833, which is obviously too much. If you have good memory, like I, uh, like I have, um, adjust this value to 2600, which should be a good uh, starting value. Of course, in case you have um, uh, low rated me memory, for example, if you use 2133, you have to lower this one uh, to maybe to 2146. Just use whatever memory you have. And of course, if you're not sure about what to do, just drop a comment on the video and I will try my best to help you guys. Go to Digi Plus VRM. This is basically the VRM setting of your mainboard. Adjust the CPU load line calibration to level five. This will make sure that the CPU core voltage will stay stable under load. Like for example, if you're stressing with Prime95, which we will do later. In case you want to know more about the CPU load line calibration, you can click on the video, which I link I linked above here on the right. I explained what the CPU core voltage uh, load line calibrations and what the VID is. Okay, go back and change CPU core cache current limit max to 255.5. You can just type anything in here and you will see it will change to the maximum, which is 255.5. This will make sure your CPU will not clock down when it's fully stressed. The last thing we have to do is change the CPU core cache voltage to manual and set it to 
3 to 5 volt, which should be a good starting value. Of course, make sure you have a good cooling unit, but otherwise it should be fine to use 1.3 to 5 volt. You can see the DRAM voltage was already set to 1.35 by, by the XMP profile. Uh, that's only my case. Maybe if you don't have an XMP profile, it could be that you just uh, use 1.2 volt here. Okay, the last thing we can do is go to tool and save the whole thing we did. Yeah, you have to go to ASUS overclock profile and then you can just give it a name. Maybe i3-6300 and save it to profile 1. You can see the profile here, you can always load it in case you need it. Now hit F10 and go to Windows and we will check the settings in there. Okay, so we entered Windows. Now we want to test the system stability. To test the system stability you need hardware info, Prime95 and CPU-Z. I also put download links in the description so you can get the tools easily. Usually I recommend to use core temp to check the core temperature, but you can see if you open the tool you can see 100 degrees and a question mark which means that it cannot read out the temperature. Up to this tutorial I actually thought that you cannot read it out in general uh, when, you, uh, when you're doing non-K overclocking. But there was a user who found out that you can use hardware info instead. Hardware info, uh, yeah, just run it, click sensors only and run. It will take a bit um, to detect the sensors of my uh, GPU. We can already uh, open CPU-Z meanwhile and CPU-Z will detect all the system details, for example, the CPU clock, call voltage, memory uh, and uh, mainboard details, which you can see here the co-voltage of around 1.325 which we set earlier in the BIOS. Also you can see the core speed of 4250 MHz which is what we also set in the BIOS. If you click the main board you can see the C170 Pro Gaming motherboard and also the BIOS version which we flashed. Unfortunately I cannot read out any memory clocks here. Could be that if you're using a newer CPU-Z version maybe 1.74 1.75 that it works. I didn't test that. Alright, click close and just ignore this error message and click continue. Now if you scroll down you can see the CPU package temperature here. Uh, be aware that the CPU package temperature is not the same as the CPU core temperature. The package is actually a little bit above the core so it will report a lower temperature. That's why you have to stay below 70 degrees here in the, core, uh, in the, in the package temperature. Now open Prime95, click custom. Change min and max FFTs to 1344. This is just a setting to stress the CPU core. Check run FFTs in place and give it a go. Now you can see the CPU package is increasing maybe to like 50 degrees, which is completely fine. In case you have 60, it's also okay, just stay away from 70 degrees. If this is, uh, yeah, you just keep this test running for around one hour. If it's running for one hour, just start playing some games. Uh, yeah, if you don't have any issues, it's totally fine. You overclocked your system successfully. If you uh, have some trouble like blue screens, you might have to consider to increase the core voltage, maybe to around 1.34, 1.35 in the BIOS. Of course, still take a look on your uh, CPU package temperature. Make sure to stay away from 70 degrees. I hope I could help you with this uh, quick tutorial. In case you have trouble or if you need my help, just drop a comment on the video. Uh, yeah, if you like this video, just give it a thumbs up and I hope you subscribe to my channel. If you need any, uh, anything else, if you have ideas for new videos, just let me know. Take care, see you soon.